good to be here. Take your seats. And you know, it's not what we're talking about today, but as Pete brought out in his testimony there, you know, I think, uh, you know, we read about the Holy Spirit being a comforter. Maybe a, you know, 2021 translation would be stress reliever, you know, anxiety, I don't know, uh, reliever as well. But, you know, it's good to have the Spirit in your life, isn't it? No matter what's happening in your life, that, you know, the God of peace is a reality when you just, you know, you can speak in, in the language that God's given you. doesn't matter what's happening, what's going through your mind, that the Spirit of God um, is in control. Well, we're going to start in Joshua today, and we're going to look at crossing the river. And I think, you know, we could probably uh, look at some of the stories in the Old Testament, um, and we see the children of Israel, we see the story uh, of God's people and God working with the nation of Israel, and we can think, well, you know, in our modern day, how, you know, how do we apply this? They've lived a very different life. But there's great lessons to be learnt as we see God's interaction with his people and the approach of, you know, the children of Israel, both good and bad, and how we should live our life and how we should approach uh, the situations and the circumstances in our life. And we're going to pick up the story here of the children of Israel. Moses has died. Joshua has uh, taken con- uh, in charge of the, the leading the children of Israel at this point in time. Now, they've, they've gone through the wilderness. They've had the promise before them of entering into the promised land. And we know the story well that they faltered the first time round. But Joshua and Caleb, you know, had the good report at that point. And Joshua and Caleb are, are once again ready to enter into the promised land. And we'll pick it up in Joshua chapter 1 and in verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast." So here the children of Israel on the banks of the river Jordan, two million or so people with their, their cattle and the people, that, you know, their children, all together at this point crossing the river. And before them is a promise that's been before the children of Israel for the last 40 or so years of the promised land. And I couldn't help but reading the front of the podium today. It says, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. And, you know, that's a New Testament verse, but, you know, it was the same for the children of Israel back at that point. The promise was given by God and the promise remained for the children of Israel. And yet at this point in their their journey, in their life, they stood before the river and on the other side of the river was the promise God had given them. This promised land, this land of flowing with milk and honey, you know, this uh, uh, total opposite of the wilderness that they'd walked out of. You know, in Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 19, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And as we live our life, as we are, you know, we're natural people, we live, we come across circumstances, situations. We come against, uh, I suppose, the things that everyday people, normal people that don't have God in their life come across. But the difference is that we stand before a river when we have those situations in our life. And on the other side of the river is the promises of God that we can walk into. And today I want to look at that we have the promises that God has given us and that they never disappear, they always remain for us. And then when we're standing on the river bank, maybe an obstacle in our life, that the promises is on the other side and that we are to get up and cross the river into the victory God has given us. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 we read, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, joint heirs with Christ, that we may be glorified together. So as we start today, let's understand who we are, the position that we are in, that we are indeed children of the living God. Let's uh, continue in verse 5. There shall not 
any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God is with us. So here's God talking to Joshua at this particular point and saying, I'm going to be with you. As you, go, you cross this river, as you go into the promise that I've given you, understand and know that I'm with you. I never, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. In Hebrews 13.5, we read the same. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man will do unto me. So no matter the situation we're in, no matter what we're up against, no matter if it's a, you know, we've found something on our back that we're not too sure about, or we're not too sure about what our employment will be you know, next week or the week after, God's promise to us is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. As God was with the children of Israel, God is with us. As we confront the problems in our life or the situations and the circumstances, we seek God's promises in our life. You know, God is with us. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance of the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So be strong and of good courage. And I think sometimes, you know, it's probably it's a worthy thing to think about that when we do come into a situation or a problem in our life, you know, what's the first thing God's saying to us is probably going, remember, be strong and of good courage. You know, don't give up at the first hurdle. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't, don't let your mind run away with you in terms of what the worst case scenario could be, but be strong and courageous of who you are in God. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 in verse 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith. Be men, be strong. You know, be strong in who you are and who God has made you. You're a child of God. As you stand on the riverbank in your life, looking to walk into the promise, look, look, looking to walk into the victory God has given you, be strong and courageous. You know, as children of God, we're not told to sort of, you know, cower in the corner, waiting for, you know, God to do something in our life, but God calls us to be strong and courageous, to see who we are and to stand tall, to go out to the riverbank and go, I'm ready to take this on. Be there for your brothers and sisters, verse 12. And to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the, the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord God has given you rest and has given you this land. Your wives, your little ones and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan, but ye shall before your brethren armed all the mighty men of valour and help them until the Lord has given you your brethren rest as he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan towards the sun rising. So what can we take from that? The children of Israel, you know, we've got the 12 tribes. And yet here's Joshua talking to some that we're going to say on the one side of the River Jordan, saying, you know, you, you haven't finished your journey just yet. You've got to come with the rest of the children of Israel and come, at, you know, and fight and take hold of this promise, the promised land with them. And I think in our own life, you know, we're to see... That even if we're, you know, we've walked into the victory and we're in a position of victory in our life and we're not necessarily confronting a situation or a problem in our life, that we're still there for our brothers and sisters. That we walk, into, we walk across the river, we confront the problems in, in our life with our brothers and sisters next to us. You know, fighting with us. Praying with us. You know, it's not a solo walk that we walk in the Lord, but it's one where we, you know, we are there to support and uphold our brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, and how do we do that? Well, we do that by turning up on a Sunday, even if life's great. Even if you don't have a reason to come out to the prayer line, you turn up on a Sunday because you want to be there for your brother and sister. You know, if you hear something's happening in your brother and sister's life, you, you tell them, I'm praying for you, and then you pray for them. 
This is how we support our, you know, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And it was, you know, the example was set by God. You know, I'm sure that the other side of the River Jordan, there was probably, you know, enough land for the children of Israel to be on one side of the river. But God was saying, you need to keep together, even if one of you, if, if some of you don't need to cross the river. You still need to be there to support each other. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If there be any... Therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercy, fulfil ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem each other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of other. You know, Pastor Trav gave a, good, a great talk on Wednesday night about being humble. And being humble, you know, the aspect brought out was that, we, you know, we're just to see ourselves as, um, you, know, nothing, you know, nothing overly special, but that we're special together. We're special together because together we're the children of God. And that we, as we come together, we're to see that we're to support our brothers and sisters and to, uh, to be there for them no matter what's happening in our brothers and sisters' life. We're not doing this alone. We have God and we have, you know, our fellowship. You know, we're there to support and to encourage. We are to see our role as being there for our brothers and sisters. Joshua chapter 3 in verse 1. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a, a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, and for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with, be with thee. And they shall command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye come to the brink of the water of Jordan, stand still in Jordan. You know, see the victory, claim the victory, get up and get going. You know, follow Jesus. Call unto God. Seek him in your, in, 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 to work in your life. You know, sometimes, you know, and I'm guilty of it as much as anyone else, you have a situation, you have something in your life and you kind of, have it in the back of your head sort of percolating along and you just let it sit there percolating along for too long. But the encouragement here is, you know, to see the victory, see what God wants for you and to claim the victory, to get up and get going. You know, Joshua says for the Ark of the Covenant to go before the people. You know, and God goes before us but we need to get up and get going too. We need to follow God who's going before us. You know, in verse 7 we read there, and Joshua said, This day will I begin to magnify in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with, Mo as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And that shall command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you come to the brink of the water of Jordan, stand still in Jordan. Matthew 12, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You know, I suppose the children of Israel to a certain point could have just stayed on one side of Jordan. It must have been all right there because some of the tribes were staying on that side. It wasn't necessarily the wilderness like at that point of the river Jordan. You know, only, you know, I think three tribes stayed back on one side of the River Jordan. So it must have, you know, been a land of some, you know, worth and if in comparison to the other side of Jordan. And Joshua commands the 
the, the priests, the Levites, to take the ark and go to the river, river Jordan to stand still in it. And we read in Matthew 1, 11 there, that the, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You know, another way of understanding that scripture is that, you know, the kingdom of heaven, your position as a child of God, your life in God, the blessings of God in your life, the reality of God in your life, is taken by force. It's not taken by just sitting back. It's not taken by just sitting back on one side and going, oh, well, this is all right. This is pretty good. There's no need for me to go to the uh, to get up and get going. And I think we've, we've always got to be aware in our life in the Lord and our life in, in, in this world and living our life on a day-to-day basis that we don't become lazy in our lazy in our walk in the Lord. We live a privileged life in Australia. You know, we, even if uh, you know things went really bad, there's plenty of sort of safety nets to catch you all the way. You know, in in, in this life that we live in Australia, and yet we've been given a promise of what God wants for us in our life. We've been told that we're children of God. You know, it's easy to sort of live a comfortable life and not think, well, I'm not going to be, you know, violent in terms of seizing who I am in God. I'm going to live with this situation. I'm going to accept this kind of problem. But our encouragement is that we've got to get up and get going. We've got to take it on. Joshua chapter 3, verse 14. And it came to pass that when the people removed from their tents and to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people... And as, they, and, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overflows all his banks all the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap, very far from the city of city Adam, that is beside Zaratan. And those that came towards the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. You know, an amazing miracle, an amazing manifestation of God's promise. And I think, you know, we probably all know that story that they walked, you know, from one side of Jordan to the other side you know, on dry ground. And we can kind of think, oh, you know, it's an amazing thing. But we kind of know, the, we know you know, we know the, I don't know, so in some respects, we know the end of the story before the, the start of the story. We knew what was going to happen, that God was going to, you know, bless them. But if you put yourself in the situation of the children of Israel at that point, they've been walking through the wilderness for 40 years. Moses died, Joshua was taken over. You know, Joshua said unto them, we're ready to go and take the promised land. This promise that's been before them for an extended period of time. It would have, the River Jordan would have been very obvious to them. We read in that passage that the River Jordan overflowed. And yes, Joshua, you know, had the, the, uh, the faith and the realisation of who he was and what God was able to do. But I'm sure there were some, some in the camp of Israel, the two million, that probably thought, well, I don't know how we're going to get across. You know, they'd seen God provide for them. They'd seen God work in their life through, the, you know, through their journey through the wilderness. And yet we can get confronted with another situation in our life or something different, and we can think, well, how's God going to do this? And I think our expectation should be, you know, a mighty miracle. You know, maybe they thought, you know, well, God had got us through the Red Sea on dry ground. Maybe he could do it again. You hope that that's how their mind was going, thinking. But maybe they thought, you know, there would be some other way that God would make it happen. But to have a mighty miracle in your life, you've just got to have faith that God can do it. You've got to have faith that no matter what the obstacle is, no matter what the visuals that you can see in your life, that God will work something amazing beyond what you can see. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Now thanks be unto God, which always calls us, us to triumph in Christ, and makes manifest the Saviour of his knowledge by us in every place. You know, that should be our declaration when we, have it, we come against a, a river in our life. Thanks unto God, which causes us to triumph in Christ. I don't know how I'm going to get onto the other side. I don't know how I'm going to walk into that victory. I've got a river flowing before me that I can't in a natural sense get to the other side of. But I know that God will cause me to triumph. And I expect a miracle. I expect something that I would never, you know, as we've read recently, exceedingly abundantly, above what we could ask or think. And I think that's a, you know, really throwing down the gauntlet, isn't it? Above what we can think. You know, we're pretty good at working out possible solutions to problems, possible ways things could work out, that God could... You know, change this, do this, and then things would be better. But when we, you know, get to the River Jordan in our life, we're to look for a miracle, something only God can do. We're not to sort of, you know, limit God in our life to go, well, you know, God, it'd be really good if you maybe sent some boats down the river and then we could take, you know, some boats across and that would kind of work out and, you know, it might take us a while to get two million people over, but eventually we'd get there. No, we just don't worry about it. Get to the river, get to the edge of the river and go, God, I want a miracle. I want you to do something amazing that I can't even think of. Joshua chapter 4 and verse 1. And it came to pass when all the people were clean, passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest stood firm, twelve stones. And ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared out of the children of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you that, when you, that when your children ask of your fathers in times to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then you shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Psalm 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And it's an interesting, you know, side note to this story. It's, you know, it's an you know, amazing story. You can, if you place yourself there with the children of Israel, you know, it, we read that it's, you know, a new generation that's grown up from, from Egypt. So, you know, they've been walking through the wilderness, you know, maybe you were born 40 years ago just as people entered into the wilderness or maybe it's, you've only been around for a few years and you know that God works in, works in your life, you know, you've had the manna from heaven, you've had God providing for you, you know, being told about this promised land, you probably heard maybe the story of Joshua and Caleb who said that there was, you know, something good there, that you were going somewhere good, you get to the river, you see the problem before you, how, how are we going to get across there? You'd heard the story about the Red Sea and thought, yes, maybe God could do the same. And then God tells Joshua to, to grab, you know, get 12 men to get a stone out of the river and take it to the other side. And I think everyone here today could put their hand up and say, God's worked in this in my life in this way. You know, God has done this in my life. And God was making a very physical reminder to the children of Israel that whenever they came to that point on the River Jordan, they would say, well, what were, you know, what were these stones about? Remember the time that God worked in your life. And I think it's, you know, as we come into the communion service, we can all give thanks for what Jesus did on the cross for us. 
that we stand now in right standing with God, righteous in His sight. You know, and maybe that's a memorial stone in our life, the reality of who we were and now who we are. Maybe it was another situation in your life where you had a healing need and it was only God that was, you know, it was something only God could do that healed you and that's a memorial stone in your life. You know, maybe it was like in Pete's testimony, you've got an employment situation and you go, well, I don't know how this is going to work out. And yet God finds the way for you to get what you want, the desires of your heart. And you go, well, that's a memorial stone in my life. And I think as we live our life, you know, we have great and mighty miracles occur in our life. We have amazing things of God working, you know, in the little things and the big things in our life. We've got to remember to take, a, you know, a memory stone with us. Don't forget it. You know, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, we're in such a privileged position that we understand what the benefits of God are because we've had them in our life previous. We're not taking on a situation for the first time in our life going, oh, well, you know, I'm not too sure about this. The day that you received the Holy Spirit, you spoke in a new tongue, you realised God was real and God could do something in your life. That God could change things in your life. And that you were changed. And as we confront the situations and, and, the, and the, you know, the, the things of our life, we should have a stack of you know, memory stones behind us that we look back on and go, yeah, that's right, that's what God did. It doesn't matter how bad the river looks. You know, it doesn't matter you know, what the situation is. I know what the promise is and I know what God has done for me. Place a memory stone in your life. Don't forget what God has done and is doing. It is important as you will encounter another obstacle in your life at some point. Now I'm still in my mid-30s, just, and you know I'm still young, <coughs> yes, and you know I'm sure you know when I'm double my age, which is actually dad's age, <laughs> um, I'll be thinking, you know, that my stack of stones of what God's done in my life is a lot bigger than it is right now. And I think we should probably all have that thought in our minds. That we want to have those stones in our life, of God working in our life. You know, we don't want to struggle for, through this natural life. Yes, we understand that God has got something much greater for us, that he's given us a promise of life eternal. But he's also given us a promise, the promises of you know, what this life can be in this, in this natural life. And we should be thinking that no matter what the next you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years has before us, that it's just going to be an exercise in collecting stones. That it doesn't matter what comes against us, that God's going to work something mighty in every part of your life, no matter what you confront. No matter what comes against you. No matter what happens tomorrow. No matter what happens in next year. No matter what happens when you're, you're 50, you're 70. That God's promises, as we read at the start, when, you know, when, when God said unto Joshua, you know, as I was with Moses, so I am with you. you know, he's, and we read that God will never leave us nor forsake us. You know, it's not just for today, but it's for the rest of our time on this, on this earth. That we're to see that God wants to work every day in our life. And he wants, to, you know, he wants us to have a big pile of stones in our life of the things that he's done. You know, understand who you are. If you've got a situation, if you're on, the, you know, you're on the brink of the river in your life and you're going, well, you know, God, do I just turn around and stay here? You know, I can see the promise on the other side. We should be going, no, I want to grab a stone out of the river on my way through and I want to see the victory in my life. 
We are no different. We all have a testimony of what God has done in our life. Remember those things. Like the children of Israel, don't forget. And I think it's pretty interesting. You know, if you, we will probably know the story of the children of Israel. They're probably not much different to an everyday natural person today. You can very easily forget about who you are. And I think God made the point saying, you know, I'm taking you into the promised land. I promised you this 40 years ago when I took you out of Egypt. I don't want you to forget what I'm taking you into. I don't want you to forget who you are. I don't want you to forget that I'm a God that never leaves you nor forsakes you. The approach is just the same for us today. If we have an obstacle, a problem, a situation, and we understand what the, what the promise is, we understand what God wants to do, what do we need to do like the children of Israel? See the promise. You know, declare what God's victory is for you. What God wants for you in your life as a child of God. Remember, God is with you. Be focused on God and seeing the victory. Don't get put off by the obstacle before you. Be there for your brothers and sisters. Remember, we're doing it together. We're here to support each other. Claim the victory. Get up. Get to the edge of the river and go, God, I want to get to the other side. Get up and get going. You need to take steps. There's no point sitting in the corner. Don't forget what God's done for you. As you confront that obstacle in your life, as you confront the situation, remember, you've got a pile of stones behind you of what God's done, and all you're going to do is just add another stone to it of God's mighty miracle in, miracles in your life. And as we finish up here today, where did the children of Israel go next? Well, we know the story of the story well. They went to Jericho. And I think it's like it's a, an amazing thought, really, that these same people, they cross the River Jordan, they pull a stone out of the river, and they put it down and go, yep, where to next, God? And God says, go to Jericho, that's yours. And God gives them the victory, and the walls of Jericho fall down. So if you feel like you've just got over, you know, God's got you through to the other side of the river in one, in one situation, what's the question we ask ourselves? Where to next, God? What do you want to do in my life next? And it might not be, you know, smoothing out something in your life or fixing, healing you or fixing a situation. It might be, you know, what, what, where do you want to send me next, Lord? What, what have you got before me? And I think it's, we, we should always keep the, the big promise of what God's for, got for us before us. Of life eternal. Of a life everlasting. That we don't just go through the situations of life, kind of going, okay, next thing, next thing. But we go, we have the, the mindset where we go, you know, where are we going next, Lord? Because I want to be there on that day that you return. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.